Hello again, agents. We all know the Foundation isn't exactly known for playing fair. This entry, however, demonstrates that they have no qualms about using anomalies unethically when need suits them. Today, we'll see why destroying anomalies has always been, and will always be, a core principle of the GOC. Notice from the Foundation Records and Information Security Administration, following the implementation of the Kraken Protocol, on the 27th of June, 1963. Containment procedures for SCP-378 have been updated. Personnel assigned to the SCP-378 project are to review its updated documentation as soon as possible. Claudia Sothi, Director, RISA. Item number SCP-378. Object Class, Thomiel. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-378 is to be contained in a subterranean entity containment terrarium Temperature and humidity are to be maintained at levels optimal for the growth and habitation of Heterodermia kinkro, Utica Cave Lichen, and Prenolepsi Severetman, North American Cave Band. Twice per year, SCP-378 is to undergo a medical and psychological evaluation. Access to SCP-378's containment terrarium is separated from the surrounding facility by the decontamination chamber. Handling personnel are required to wear full body protection and must be screened for SCP-378-A prior to exiting the contamination. Infected personnel are to be terminated unless the position of SCP-378-1 or-3 is vacant, in which case they are to be assigned to the relevant position instead. As of the adoption of the Kraken Protocol, SCP-378's containment is focused on maintaining its three primary containment components. SCP-378-1 is housed in the Area 19 barracks. SCP-378-1 is employed as a maintenance technician with a security clearance of 0-A19. Upon the death of the current SCP-378-1, brain dead or comatose reserve personnel might be elected to replace it. As SCP-378-1 is the primary means of communication with SCP-378, Care must be maintained to keep SCP-378-1's vocal functions in working order. SCP-378-2 currently takes the form of David Lockhead, a 36-year-old Caucasian male in the employ of the American Supernatural Containment Initiative, ASCI, as a clerical aide. To maintain the continued operations of the SCP Foundation in the United States, SCP-378-2 has been tasked with sabotaging ASCI operations against the Foundation, as well as collecting information in the Foundation's interest. SCP-378-2 is expected to follow a strict health and exercise regimen due to the inherent difficulty in replacing it. SCP-378-3 currently takes the form of Lisa Martin, a 33-year-old Mexican-American female employee at the Spicy Cross Pizza in Staten Island. In the event of SCP-378-3's death, it must be replaced as soon as possible. Each component is fitted with a tracking device and an audio recorder. Each week, embedded agents stationed near each component are to evaluate the health and integrity of each component and its associated surveillance equipment. The utilization of SCP-378-A in further infiltration is pending Foundation Overwatch approval. Description SCP-378 is an arthropod superficially resembling a deformed larval instance of Scolopendra giganten, Amazonian giant centipede. SCP-378's legs are largely vestigial, primarily meant to assist in peristatic locomotion. SCP-378 measures 3 meters from mouth to anus, with a bodily thickness of 1 meter and a weight of 233 kilograms. Under normal conditions, SCP-378 is an omnivore with a diet consisting primarily of lichen and insects. SCP-378 is capable of asexual reproduction at will, producing instances of SCP-378-A from its anus. Instances of SCP-378-A resemble adult Scolopendra gigante. This section suggests this resemblance is superficial, as SCP-378-A lacks external organ systems beyond a primitive neural network. Instances of SCP-378-A are controlled remotely by SCP-378. 
SCP-378-8 are obligate endoparasites infecting advanced primates such as humans, Homo hypnotus, and Gigantopecus sapiens, common Sasquatch. Upon infection, SCP-378-8 integrates itself with its host's neighbor system through poorly understood means, inducing brain death and extending SCP-378's remote control to the host itself. Vital functions and sensory input remain unaffected. Upon infecting a suitable host, SCP-378 will attempt to reintegrate its host into their respective species social sphere. Once integrated, SCP-378 directs its host to indefinitely engage in the behaviors typical for its species, such as communal labor and social recreation. Human hosts prefer environments with a high population density and a robust entertainment scene. The upper limit of active host SCP-378 can maintain at any one time is unknown. Upon internal interrogation, SCP-378 confessed to the existence of 26 human hosts, as well as two instances of Aulata Pigra, Guatemalan Black Howler, and three instances of SCP-1000, of which is noted had been acquired during a period of heavy intoxication. Research into SCP-378's apparent immunity to SCP-1000's anomalous effects is ongoing. Addendum 178-294-B A psychological evaluation of SCP-378 Conducted by Dr. Simon Glass Tentatively designated Scolopendra anomalia, SCP-378 is unique among arthropods, possessing either human levels of sapiens or the ability to emulate its host's intellectual faculties. In any case, SCP-378 is self-aware and remarkably intelligent. SCP-378's relationship to its host is complicated. While SCP-378 maintains a consistent sense of identity across multiple hosts, each is treated as a persona for SCP-378 to roleplay. Hosts rarely interact with SCP-378 or fellow hosts, suggesting SCP-378 primarily utilizes its anomalous abilities for entertainment. This is further suggested by SCP-378's readiness to abandon such personas under duress. Aside from integration into human social spheres, host behavior is largely unique to each instance. Extroversion is relatively common. Hosts rarely isolate themselves except to sleep or excrete. SCP-378 appears to take equal enthusiasm in stress versus pleasant situations. Of note, SCP-378 is particularly attached to the identity of Lisa Martin. In contrast to other hosts, Lisa Martin's weekly routine is relatively static. From 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on all days except Saturday, Miss Martin will show up to work at the nearest pizzeria from the former location of the Gandonio Spice, regardless of employment status or scheduled hours. From 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. on all days except Saturday, Miss Martin will engage in the maintenance of one of 17 rooftop gardens across the city of New York. Of these, 13 are maintained by a cooperative, 12 of which Miss Martin is not a part of. From 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. on Saturdays, Miss Martin alternates between socializing with a collection of friends, co-workers, and lovers, and playing piano for various high-end bars. From 11 p.m. to 12 a.m., Miss Martin will shower, and prepare for bed. Miss Martin will sleep from 12 a.m. to 7 a.m., when she will wake up and prepare for the next cycle. In the event of Miss Martin's death, SCP-378 will direct another host to assume her identity. Attempts to interrupt Miss Martin's routine have been unilaterally met with unusual levels of hostility from SCP-378 and its hosts. From the Hayden at Sipnet. Assistant Director Daniela Hayden, Classification Level, Rise at Ash 4, Employee Number 134. 2. Dear 19 K Feinstein at Sipnet, Director Kesley Feinstein, Classification Level XK 4, Employee Number 87. Identifying Current Hosts 27th of April 1963. Director Feinstein. Mr. Song and Dr. Glass' work have revealed quite a bit about SCP-378. Most importantly, 
I do not believe it understands the significance of social dynamics, especially in regards to hierarchy and social capital. Several of SCP-378's identities held surprising positions of power. Indeed, two of them, David Lockhead and Alfonso Lios, are beyond reach of the Foundation's current capacity to contain. Despite this, SCP-378 has shown a willingness to sacrifice such hosts in order to defend, replace, or otherwise maintain Lisa Martin. Odd, yes, but useful enough. It'd be a shame if something were to happen to Miss Martin and her friends, would it not? SCP-378 is sapient, but it, by no means, understands the significance of its actions. With a little bit of persuasion, David Lockhead might get a sense from Petty Paper Pusher for the ASCI, right where the Foundation most needs a puppet. And if I'm not mistaken, Spicy Cross Pizza could always do with a second franchise. Proposal Employing SCP-378's anomalous abilities to defend Foundation operations in the United States. Council vote summary. Yeah, 051, 053, 054, 056, 057, 058, 0510, 0512, 0513. Nay, 052, 055, 059. Abstain. 0511. Status. Approved. Proposal asserted. The Kraken Protocol has been initiated. From S. Song 1 at Sibnet. Senior researcher Sang Hung Song. Classification level Gamma U 3. Employee number 148. 2. D19 underscore K Feinstein at Sibnet. Director Kesley Feinstein. Classification level XK-4, employee number 87. Delays in the Gamma U-2677 project. Date, 21 of July, 1965. So, good news and bad news, Director. Good news, as I'm assuming you already heard, with the plans for construction of Site-56, all thanks to a certain Mr. Lockhead, the Kraken Protocol is getting a much-needed expansion. With its relative proximity to both the Lily of the Valley Nexus and the Pacific Northwest, it's a perfect opportunity to expand the scope of SCP-1000's containment while ensuring the ASCI doesn't stock lot B dry before we get to it. For all its oddities, SCP-378 appears to be delighted at the prospect of a change in scenery. I can't imagine a tropical centripetal grove likes having a sphere of influence limited to New England, of all places. But that's besides the point. It's that she was compliant enough on the way there. Which leads me to the bad news. Rupert Tremont's a fun little guy. Agent of the FBI's unofficial unusual incidents unit and all too stupid to trust Agent Ryans with his drink while he went to the restroom. After that, it's a matter of transport back to provisional area 56 in Black Rock and a centipede down the gullet. Problem comes up when 378 tells us it can't establish a connection. Now, Tremont's still alive, so that's not normal. We run a number of tests, try to figure out what went wrong, and that's when we see a different centripede in his head, where our centripede usually goes. More to come, but I have a bad feeling about this. And look. The SCP Foundation's corruption runs deep. They manipulate institutions and sacrifice civilians without batting an eye. They even think they're the only ones playing this game. Who knows how many other versions of SCP-378 are out there, used by organizations with intentions just as bad, or even worse, than the SCP Foundation itself. Thankfully, our efforts have exposed this threat to normalcy, and will move us to neutralize the manipulative danger that is Anomaly 378. Keep supporting our mission by leaving comments and suggestions below. I am Virostris Anonimo, we are the GOC, and you have been informed.